Hey Magic Me on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. I am a sucker for playing decks that are from older Eternal formats and bringing them into Standard. I am currently, my main deck in Standard is Land Destruction. I like playing Turbo Fog. I like, I like the last uh, Workshop event that we had because it allowed me to basically play Necropotence in Standard. Well, this is Delver. This is an is a, a blue red Delver deck. Uh, not quite Delver. <laughs> You're a Salamander Drake instead of a, an insect, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So the idea is basically you play as many creatures. You play in this case twelve creatures, and a bunch of instants and sorceries to uh, keep the opponent off of their game, to deal some damage, and draw more cards <laughs> and eventually you win by just poking them to death that's the idea anyway except that in this case sometimes they're not so much pokes sometimes they're falcon punches so we'll get to that so first of all our creatures we have three terramander i would go to four terramander is a little bit weird there are a few cards in this deck that actually care about uh instants and sorceries uh rather i should say a few cards that make the instance of sorceries become exiled from your graveyard. And thankfully for Crackling Drake, that does not matter at all. For Sprite Dragon, it doesn't matter. For Terramander, it does. So because of that, this ends up actually only being a three of. Uh, those cards include uh, Sleep of the Dead and Glimpse of Freedom. I know I'm already bouncing all over the place, but so this is a one mana flying creature, except it's actually a two mana five five flyer, <laughs> eventually. This does not have a sorcery speed restriction. You can activate that at any time you'd like. Uh, the next creature is, we have four sprite dragons. This is a 1-1 one, one flying haste. You'll notice the theme here, all the creatures fly. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So this just gets, to, it's like Storm Chaser Mage, but with lower toughness to begin with. So it is more susceptible to removal, but you get to hang on to the counters. It's not prowess. That seems alright, <laughs> and of, of course eventually this just takes over the game. Uh, then we have one God Eternal Kefnet. It's legendary, I don't want to run more than one, and it's not like land destruction where we're getting a huge discount generally and the spells are more impactful. Uh, this one is just a value 4-5, and that can keep coming back, which seems alright. Uh, and then four Crackling Drake, which is a four mana flying 10-4. <laughs> or something like that, that draws you a card when it enters. So, even if they remove it, at least it replaced itself, and they have to remove it because it flies and hits really hard. So to, to make sure, now we only have 22 lands in the deck, and we'll get to those in a bit, but to make sure we keep hitting our land drops for four mana creatures, we have cards like Opt, so of course that's going to be a four of. We have Anticipate, uh, look at the top three cards of your library, put one in your hand. It's like Impulse, but you only look at the top three instead of four. Uh, we have Glimpse of Freedom, just as a one of, because uh, when you find multiple copies, the it doesn't help the escape all that much. So this one has Draw a Card, Escape, Three Mana, Exile, Five Other Cards from Your Graveyard. And you can keep casting it over and over and over again. As long as you have the mana and the cards in your graveyard, you can just keep casting it which obviously means we're going to keep getting triggers on Sprite Dragon, etc. Uh, but having extra copies doesn't do you all that much good. Uh, actually, that's the same reasoning for Sleep of the Dead, which is one of our interaction pieces. Then we have two Radical Ideas. Eventually we can get to the point where we'll have, say, creatures we can't cast or extra lands in our hand, or just a spell, uh, an instant of sorcery that isn't right for the situation, and we can discard it for Jumpstart just to draw an extra card. Also it kind of turns our lands into extra sprite dragon triggers. <laughs> uh, and then we have, let's see, winged words. All of our creatures fly, so this is usually, unless they've dealt with one of our creatures, this is a two mana draw two cards. Seems good. <laughs> Seems good. Now for some interaction we have a sleep of the dead, tap a creature, doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, if they happen to have a flyer that gets in the way uh, that's going to block you, you can remove it. Multiple creatures. It is a sorcery, so be careful you can't use this on your opponent's turn, unfortunately. But it does keep them tapped down for a while. Uh, you have four shocks, because not only does it deal with creatures, but it can be pointed at their face for extra damage. For I wonder if that might matter for some of these. Uh, then we have Lava Coil. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't target players or planeswalkers, but it's kind of a necessary evil. Two mana, four damage, and it exiles the creature, so it gets past those pesky die triggers. It's sort of just a concession to standard being a really creature-heavy format, and we need it. We need it to stay alive against low to the ground decks. We need it for uh, creatures with. We need it for a, for a good bit. Now, next we have Raking Claws. At worst, it's just cycle, and draws us a card. Two mana, draw a card. At best, it gives double strike to a creature. And remember, we have some big, chunky creatures in this deck, so this can just be an oops, I win button. I wouldn't run more than one unless I'm somehow going all in, but unfortunately we don't have, say, like Enigma Drake in standard right now. We don't have enough creatures that I could make every creature have an oops, I win button. Uh, so not more than one right now. Feel free to disagree, and because it cycles, you can actually afford to run more than I'm running, and then just if you don't have them, if you don't have them for the situation, just cycle it away. It's fine. Uh, we also have one Beacon Bolt. It's three mana. Unfortunately, in the early game, it's not really a removal spell, uh, but eventually you can it it'll scale as the game goes on. So it deals damage equal to the number of instants and sorceries you own in exile and your graveyard, and it has jump starts. So you can do it again. This means that even late in the game, when you're having to deal with things like Beanstalk Giants, you're still going to be able to use it. That seems alright, uh, but it is slow, so no more than one. Uh, and then for our lands, so 5 Island, 4 Mountain, 4 Fable Passage to go and get those, 4 Steam Vents, 4 Temple of Epiphany, and 1 Castle Vantress. Uh, it, it's a pretty heavy mana investment, but there will be times when you just need to set up for future turns, and Scry 2 lets you do that, over and over and over again. <laughs> So that seems alright, and that's the deck. Now, it is made for best of one, but I threw together a sideboard. This is Arena, this is just what I happen to have. Unfortunately, this isn't, this isn't even complete, even for what I would like. So, Goblin Crater Maker, for instance, should be in here, but we have something to deal with flying and, uh, and artifacts, Reckless Airstrike. We have Aether Gust for those red and green permanents. Uh, we have Blitz of the Thunder Raptor as a cheaper version of uh, Beacon Bolts. We also have more Beacon Bolts. We have Chandra's Pyro Helix for uh, Mono Red Cavalcade and just a few other decks. Firemind's Research, if we know that the opponent isn't going to be able to, like if we're on the play and they're not going to be able to counter it, or if it's a control deck where we can just sort of overwhelm them with card advantage um, using something like this. Two more God Eternal Kefnets for removal heavy decks that where the game is going to go on for long and Ral for much the same, and then one Blast Zone is a catch-all for problem permanence. Uh, obviously it comes in on one, it won't help with tokens, but it helps with sort of whatever else we'd like. This is almost mainboardable, but unfortunately it doesn't make either red or blue for Crackling Drake, and that seems pretty substantial. So because of that, we're actually only going to be running it as a one of in the sideboard. All right, and that's the deck. I'm gonna get some games with it in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.